Look at these three coins that I have between thumb and forefinger. I'm swiveling them around, balancing that centre one between the other two. Can you see that? You think you could do it? Well, keep watching them carefully as I slow them down and stop. Not three at all, only two. In fact, it's all a bit of a trick that your eyes and brains play on you. What happens is you're lagging behind a little bit. You're seeing one coin where it was just a moment ago when it's still moved into this position here. All the time you're lagging a little bit behind and your eyes and brains often play tricks on you. They're called optical illusions. You may have seen this one in a book sometime. It's another optical illusion. If I say to you, what do you see? You say to me, oh, I see a white vase on a black background. Good. Some of you are saying, oh, I can see something else as well. Look carefully, particularly in the centre of the picture, and you may notice two faces staring at each other, black silhouettes on a white background. Now, can you see both of those pictures, the vase and the faces? Well, what I want you to do now is just focus on one of them. Just concentrate on the vase. Don't let yourself see the faces. Can you do that? Almost certainly not. The faces keep intruding. The pictures keep flipping backwards and forwards from one another. Our eyes and brains play tricks on us all the time. Because when you see something, you don't just see it with your eyes. It's true that your eyes form little images in the backs of them, the retinas, and then messages are sent to the brain. But the brain, in turn, is putting together, with that new information coming back, all sorts of memories from the past, and also it's comparing what you're seeing in the centre with what's on the outside as well. Here's another optical illusion. Have a look at this one. What can you see? You might say, oh, I can see a woman's face. Good. Is it an old woman or a young woman? Now, if there's several of you in the room, some of you are probably saying an old woman and others saying a young woman. In fact, they're both there. Can you see them both? Maybe not. If you can see the young woman, let's first of all have a look at her. I'll come into the picture as a ghost and show you the young woman. Well, here's her hair up here. Down here, you can see her eyelash, can't you? She's looking away from the camera. There's her cheekbone here. We come down her cheek, and that's her chin. Chin comes back up here, and she has a, a choker around her neck in that position there. Up here, of course, is her ear. That's the young woman. You can see her? Sure. Now, what about the old woman? You think you can see her? Maybe she's just a little bit more difficult. I'll come in as a ghost again and point her out to you. This time, the old woman is looking down. This is her nose this time. There it is, quite a large nose, and it comes back up here. That's her eye. It's no longer an ear. Now it's the old woman's eye. And down here, of course, is the old woman's mouth. So the old woman is looking downwards. Did you see them both? That's another cunning optical illusion. Well, you might say, oh, these are very complicated pictures, but my eyes would never fool me. My brain would never fool me with a simple picture. What about squares on rectangles? That's fairly simple. Have a look at these two. There we have uh, a black square on a white background and a white square on a black background. Which of the two centre squares, the black one or the white one, is larger? You might say, oh, that's an easy question. The white one is much larger, and it certainly looks that way, doesn't it? But what I can do is pick them up, because they're only stuck down with a piece of glue, and I can compare them like this, and you will notice that they are exactly the same size. In fact, they're down to the millimetre the same size because I cut them out together. And yet when you look at them, you're comparing them not only with each other, but also with the backgrounds as well. What if we put some grey squares on those black and white cards? Let's see what happens then. This time I want you to not worry so much about the size of the squares, but about the colour. You have a grey here and a grey there. Which of the two greys is darker? You might say, oh, no doubt about it. That one is quite a dark grey. This one is a very light grey. But you've probably guessed it already, haven't you? If I take them off and look at them side by side, they are, in fact, identical greys. I cut them from the same sheet of cardboard. But when I put them in those positions, you're not only comparing the two greys, but you're also comparing them with the backgrounds. And the white background tells you this is a dark grey. Black background tells you this is a light grey. So there you have another sort of optical illusion that's all to do with contrast.